Holy moly. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it's me. I clicked. Uh, I clicked on uh, on the not the good button. Do you see me? Sorry, sorry guys. Uh, so here, I uh, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. I had a little problem with my lights just before, and I uh, forgot to <laughs> click on the on the button to start the stream. Uh, I'm uh, it's infuriating, but uh, yeah, sorry, really, really sorry. Uh, I just worked on uh, the pre-highlight stuff here. And now I will just uh, add some uh, some colors. So I just put some white over, uh, over my black undercoat, you know, it's just that. And I put some white like this, you know, everywhere. Just to uh, find some lights. And try to have a first uh, a first impression, you know, to understand the lights, and um, draw draw something, you know, have a nice uh, first uh, first first light impression. So now I'll just try to uh, create some kind of um, gradation strand with my greens here. So we'll have to use some various greens. We'll use a lot of them because I don't want to, to do too much mixing. It's uh, I have a lot of greens, so uh, mixing is not that big of a deal, but I want to uh, not have to mix a lot, lot, lot of colors. Uh, I will use that for some lights, not every, every one of them. Hi Joe! Started very, very, very late because I forgot to I have to press the good button, you know, uh, sometimes I have to uh, to say, uh, yeah, okay, uh, I want to go live on YouTube, and sometimes I just have to, to click start the live stream on, on OBS, and uh, here I just had a little problem with one of my lamps, and yeah, a little bit of stress, so uh, I forgot to click on the button, and uh, I'm furious right now, uh, furious. Uh, against myself, of course, but it's uh, it's infuriating. Uh, okay, so I have some nice basic flesh we we'll use here. So, uh, basic green will be that one, olive green from Vallejo. Here I have some dark green. Uh, it's, uh, it's also, uh, it's uh, olive gray. It's very dark green. Um, and I will use the flesh tone a little bit of that uh, green. Okay, so we have pretty much everything in place here. I will just add some 
reddish magenta stuff. To make shadows. So. And, and uh, yeah, uh, some brown burnt umber. Sunburnt umber, uh, we'll put that and that mixed together. Okay, this will be very interesting to add that in my dark green shadows. Okay, that's good. Try to cool a little bit of that down beforehand, here before reaching. Okay. So I'm trying to find some something interesting to use. So there I have that, maybe just add some burnt timber in that. Not too much, just a little to uh, saturate the thing here and I will mix that with that. There, okay. Now we have our strand of color, which is uh, Not too bad, I think it's good here. Okay. So. Here I'm just putting some patches. Just for having the first first steps of my colors here. Very first steps. There I can also use some wet blending a little. I'm not trying to blend uh, my colors. Just trying to, um, if if they blend, if they blend, I mean it's good. Uh, I'm not complaining, but uh, not just I'm not trying to have a pure, perfectly blended colors. Just trying to put the right colors in the right place. So I made some mixes just for that. Um, if I made li like that, I made a little mistake, I just put some dark color. I would just have to put some of my other one, and uh, I have the beginning of a gradation. So that's exactly, exactly what I wanted to, to have here. Beginning of a gradation, not not very not very clean, but it's not a problem. I'm trying to be clean. First, specifically on the first steps. First steps should be messy, messy, kind of almost ugly. It's not. You shouldn't try to 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 make every steps you know um, perfectly good looking. Okay, every step should be relevant. But not, not good looking per se. Just try to put some color, some colors. Here I'm just trying to remove. If I have this feeling of you know um, almost in pesto, uh, I try to remove the the, the, the overrun of, of paint. But that's all. Here I want to have something you know dark really dark, so I'm putting some really, really dark green here. So 
So Joe, I hope you're doing well. I do not know if you uh, have heard me, because uh, I think I'm doomed tonight. Uh, problem with my lights, problem with, um, with my uh, undercoat, problem with pretty much everything here. It's uh, not a good day for me. <laughs> I don't know why. But so here, just put some green. It's too much diluted. That's not a problem. I will add some paint and uh, we'll be good to go. There we are. Some lights because it's very light. Very highlighted here. It's... Okay, and final light. It's kind of too much yellowish, I think. I'm not very fond of that color. I will change that. I'll change that. Um, too much yellowish for me, for my test. So I will just use some basic flesh. Not basic, but clear flesh. Here. Or at least remove. Now I will just remove one of my greens. Yeah, that's better. Just remove the lemon lemon green. Oh yeah. Good. Cool. Better living conditions, I imagine. <laughs> yeah, it's far better. Okay. You're in lockdown currently. The part here. <clears throat> Very nice. Okay, uh, some show there. here. Okay. Okay, we we'll had more earth tone. I think it's better to have more earth tone here. Oh, okay. That's harsh. Harsh conditions. Yeah, strange. Very strange. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Kind of insane. Living strange times right now. 
Ok. Here we we should be in lockdown, but we we don't see the difference. So even the parts of uh, France in which we don't have a lot of uh, police officers, so it's pretty much a desert here. Okay. First steps are quite good right now. I just have to put some highlights also on this part here. This part there. Okay. I'll do the same the same thing here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Definitely strange that uh, vision of uh, of this crisis and the way things are handled. Very strange. And kind of stupid also. But yeah. So yes, just to explain a little what I'm doing uh, here, it's uh, it's kind of interesting because I can you know I have some huge surfaces to paint, and I can just uh, divide things in little chunks, you know, little areas. I don't have to uh, focus too much on doing a good uh, base coat, and uh, no, just have to uh, to paint and see what's happening. Uh, that's why I uh, really love to use this type of technique because it's very simple and it's giving uh, most immediate results. Now I have another idea, uh, I will just use uh, some of my dark green and uh, later I will just add some uh, light color, something like ivory for example, something quite neutral. And uh, yes, I will uh, draw some, uh, some secondary highlights, you know, like the light coming from the 
from from the, the ground. Uh, you have uh, you have light bouncing everywhere, and of course it will bounce on the ground and, uh, and just highlight other parts of the figure. Yeah, you like that this way? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, interesting because it's very loose. You can just work and see what's happening. And I really like this uh, vision of painting loosely. Because I have this tendency to overwork pretty much everything, which is a big problem for me. And uh, I found this way of painting was uh, helping me to not overwork, to just make stuff dirty and uh, Yeah, it's a good help for me to work like that. Here we are. Yeah. I'm trying to uh, to increase my speed. Uh, I, I know that I'm not fast enough. I want to be faster, faster, faster because uh, because uh, I want to paint more, paint more stuff. And uh, being fast is definitely something I have to um, to work on more and more and more. But uh, I'm right now I'm very much faster <laughs> uh, than what I used to uh, I used to be. I was from a, a generation of painter uh, whom other people just get this type of advice, you know, just thin your paint, thin your paint, more water, more water, which is not not a good uh, a good advice. Definitely not a good advice. Yes, you should uh, you should thin your paints, uh, and it's always good to add some water, but not too much to begin with. And uh, a good a good paint job is not it's, it's not that okay. The good paint job is knowing how to uh, how to put your your good values, putting good values on good places, knowing how to render how to render uh, some matter, where to put your lights. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're using a, a brush. Yep. I try to. Uh, for me, I try to avoid the brush because uh, since I am keen to overwork, I will um, most likely try to keep the, the 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 perfect blends you achieve with an airbrush. And uh, yeah, it's not natural for me. I mean, just for me. Uh, I yeah prefer to work from ugly to something more interesting than having this impression of coming f through starting to work on a very good blended thing great great area everything is in place and blended and and yeah I will have, I will have this impression of just putting stains everywhere and messing the work so yeah that's why i prefer to stick to um the, the rawness harshness of my uh, brush work But here, for example, that's on this biceps here. 
I, uh, I just put some work here, a little, just a few steps, and I have something blended. It's not perfect, but uh, a few more steps, and uh, this will be almost over blended. But this way of painting is, I think, very close from uh, the one used by uh, Marc Masclan or Kirill Kenneth. I just bought the, the book, uh, a book from uh, Kirill Kenneth, uh, and uh, yeah, I saw that the technique he's using is definitely something like that, you know, putting patches of colors and. It's very, just like we, we, we said um, um, in the previous live stream, it's, it's grisaille. It's basically grisaille. It's very simplified, but it's, uh, it's a grisaille. We just share that thing. Go further. Couple of hashtags. Yeah, and this, the other thing with uh, the, the, that type of work, uh, for me, it's if the thing is uh, already uh, difficult and already, um, yeah, painful to work on, it's, uh, it's definitely not natural, I mean, to... You, I mean, if, you, if you're making a mistake uh, with colors, you, you have a lot to lose and you uh, lose a lot of your hard hard work. So, um, it tends to limitate the, 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 the choices you can make for, for your, your, your colors, for example. If each step is very easy, very loose and almost ugly, you can mess around more easily. I mean, this for me, it's working like that. And yes, building saturation with <laughs> dirty water, it's definitely not a good way to go. Successive washes is a good technique, but it can be very, 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 very time consuming and sometimes not giving the best results. You can end up having really dull lights and something not that interesting. If you're interested by that, I uh, I think it could be a great thing to buy the book uh, Curie Can I have wrote. It's a really, 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 really good book. I think it's one of the best you can buy uh, for for any type of uh, painting activity you can have, not just figure. It's very complete. It's Great, great book. So here.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in miniature mentor, there is some some good stuff because it's not over. I mean, it's it, it's not um, unapplicable. Uh, you know, I think uh, one of the the video was with uh, Laurent Esposito. He is painting a lot with this classic way of painting figures, uh, but. The dilutions is, you know, the, the, the ratio that uh, he gave with water was not unrealistic. Uh, I mean, it was quite realistic and uh, really, uh, really okay, really usable. But here we had a book which is uh, considered by a French painter uh, like the Bible for figure painting still now. Um, and the, 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 the amount of water, it was ratio like you had you had ratios like one ten one part paint ten part water it's just incredible uh, I, I don't think anyone would use this type of, uh, of dilution truly and try to achieve results good results with that because um yeah guess what it's not really possible i tried and uh i lost a lot of time i mean a lot of time trying to work like that Oh, hi, David. Salut, salut. But it was a good book. I'm not saying, I'm, I'm not dismissing the fact that this book was very interesting. Uh, but uh, it's, it was very much not perfect and uh, with stuff that we can consider like mistakes right now. Trying to paint with that type of dilution is just crazy. I mean, it's crazy. You 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 are you, you will have underbinding. It's a, it's a big problem for your for your paint. It will completely destroy you with your paint. So I'm not saying that time to time I don't use some very very high dilutions, but it's not something you should try to enforce. This is just when needed, sometimes you have to dilute a lot just for uh, fixing a problem, but that's it. Miniature Mentor was kind of a good, good, um, good thing. I, th I think it was a great way to show some uh, actual techniques. It was very interesting, Miniature Mentor. I saw some stuff, quite good. Okay. The other thing interesting with this uh, this approach, uh, I can build a lot of saturation because I will work, I will focus my uh, my energy, my time on um, on on some very small areas because. If you just put some very high saturation on small areas, uh, you will interpret the old thing as highly saturated. It's very interesting with reds. Uh, on my banner here, I have an old con, uh, the betrayer, and I work like that. You know, yeah, I had some very, very, very powerful reds, but on tiny surfaces. But it's enough to uh, give the impression of a super, super uh, um, saturated color. Yeah, building slowly from from light to dark. Yes. Yeah. This this was the the, the thing used by uh, Laurent Posito that is working. It's beautiful. I mean, uh, it's very elegant. I really love his style. And since since he's uh, some kind of a master of that approach is working very efficiently. Uh, Mathieu Weish also is working like that. It's very... It's kind of interesting, but uh, for me I discovered that this type of work was not suitable for my approach. I love super powerful lights and I love to work on, uh, on a lot of rendering stuff and uh, I need to be more opaque for that. Okay, there we are. 
put some colors here. Put some greens. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Their scripting tutorials were great. There's some great stuff here. Yeah. It was very good. I don't know if it's still um, a viable business model because uh, with YouTube right now you have a lot of people showing things, showing great techniques. So I don't know if it's still a, a good business model to uh, sell videos, but um, I hope so for him, because uh, it was hard work. Just use uh, some of my dark green here. Uh, yeah, now I'll take some ivory. It's off white. Great, ivory. Off white will be too powerful. Hurry. Paints are too old, it's awful. Oh, and David, I hope you're doing well. Don't know if you're still there. So that here, uh, I have some uh, ivory, I will use that to pretty much re-highlight some shadows here, because I want them to not pop that strongly, you know. So, there we are. Put that here. And just have that. Yeah, not being too grayish because it's not good. I don't want to be that too much grayish tone, it's not. It's not something that good. I'll put some green here. And right, that's it. Ah, yeah. Yeah. But it's kind of difficult to, uh, to show every, every little steps perfectly uh, because um, just you sculpt so you, you know it's you can have a lot of back and forth movement uh, and it can be uh, it can be very difficult to um, to find a good um, good way of um, you know, good 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 steps a good way to 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 divide things into steps I don't know you can under understand uh, why it's difficult to show everything. So here, I'm kind of illustrating another of my rules, which is a big word, but it's not that big, a, it's not that important, but if I need lights, in shadows, basically here we are in shadows, I desaturate, more desaturation, and um, colder too, but I prefer to work with, with saturation first. 
So yeah, lights and shadow equal uh, less saturation, less overall saturation. It's working for me. Okay. So it's not stupid if it's working. <laughs> Here, put some, some heat there, not too bad, still very harsh, but not too bad. <laughs> can just dilute that a little. Since here we are in, uh, in the shadows, just we'll use that here as a wash. Two things up. Great. Yeah. Some kind of a good idea about the process is uh, was the, the most important thing, I think. So here, just okay. We'll focus a little more on the face because um, this face needs love. <laughs> Great. Here I will try something. Uh, we'll use some of this color here, some ivory there. We'll have nice pink. Just a little bit of that. Okay. Some kind of pinkish tone. So, try to mix that pinkish tone. Too much dilution here. Okay. Because on the lips, I want that pinkish stuff to, uh, to, to be seen. I uh, just begin maybe an hour, not uh, something something like that. I will uh, just uh, check. Let me check. I'm streaming. Uh, yeah, forty three minutes. So something like that. A little more because I uh, just forgot to uh, push the <laughs> start live stream button. But uh, yeah. It's a little less than one hour. It's a couple more, you know. Great. Et je vais arriver à ce résultat. I will try to reach this state. Not finished, but uh, nice. <laughs> So here, lips, putting some of uh, these, uh, oh, it's a teeth, okay. Very, very important highlights here, there, just there. Also, I want something slightly more uh, pinkish. So, here I'm over diluting some paint just for glazing the surface, enabling me to correct the, 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 the hue I'm trying to achieve. There. So here, this is a case of using over diluted paint, for example.
just to help me, uh, you know, because you have to uh, you have to work on uh, on a lot of things for pretty much having a nice uh, balance between colors. So uh, here just made a mix. It was not pinkish enough, so I'm correcting it with a nice glaze. The magenta thing, something quite magenta. It's not a true magenta, but it's gonna close, and it's enough for me. Oh, you're welcome, David. <laughs> Now I'll try to um, to clean things up because it's also it's dirty, it's ugly, but with few strokes it can be nice. I'm working a lot, a lot of that, making a mess, fixing the thing, and uh, moving. In the next uh, area. That's my way of painting pretty much right now. I prefer to paint like that. If I'm making a mistake, it's not that big of a deal. I can correct anytime. It's really easy. I think it's very important to work loosely. I, I just. I would say making you uh, want to paint green skins, yeah. It's very fun to paint. Love that. It's really, uh, really nice to uh, to paint these guys. So just changing my music. Yeah. And yes, it's uh, it's. Uh, I'm trying to apply the same thing with drawing. It's very difficult for me to apply it to uh, to sculpting. But I should try to work like that. A little more. I mean, um, being loose most of the time, not trying to uh, to 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 do pretty things, just trying to 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 put information and uh, just try to make it work. I don't know if I'm clear, but uh, yeah, it's really something. Uh, Overcoming the overwork, it's really something important for me. So here, just we'll do a basic other strand for... I mean, for rebuilding my greenish tones. There. The other very interesting thing about this approach, I mean, having a lot of pinkish stuff uh, on, uh, on the figure, and uh, it's um, helping me to uh, keep the focus on the face. Okay. So here I will just try to draw a you know, little texture, just, just very, very, very thin stripes. Just 
trying to create some kind of a texture here. More saturation. There. And green here. Chin. So yes, this this idea is putting putting patches of color, and uh, I've done it. You can you can achieve some great great results and really thin uh, results um, on the 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 the, the, the book. Uh, I uh, I spoke about earlier. Um, they have this hierarchy of techniques in saying that yeah you should if you want some very very thin results you should absolutely work with uh, successive washes uh, if you're working with uh, thicker paints and then focusing on you know mid tones and we call it intermediary technique here it's, there is a name for that um, it was uh, it was uh, okay-ish but not uh, as fancy as the super duper fancy thing like successive washes uh, basically this tone in the book this idea is, was something very for me very stupid because no it's not working like that you can achieve extremely thin results with uh, intermediary stuff you know I worked on, uh, on several things uh, like um, uh, let's see if I can reach it without dropping everything uh, yeah here for example that mini I was working on Katarzyna Grefax she had this very small head and this head very very small head I worked just like that and I had no troubles, no problems. And uh, here you can't see the amount of, uh, of very small nuances, hues I put. And I have very, very smooth results. I mean, it's smooth. It's really smooth. It's thin. It's just, I mean, I couldn't have something that um, impactful uh, in this amount of time and with this type of result with successive wishes. I was talking about uh, the um, the great book, Le Grand Livre de la Figurine, which is a good book. It's it's a good it's a good one, uh, but uh, it's I think right now it's kind of overrated. And uh, I saw this book being sold to incredible prices because the thing is out of print since a long time. And uh, yeah, it's crazy the amount of money people can spend in a, in, in, a, in a book which is no longer that relevant to begin with. I mean, You know, even the guy who created that one, uh, Jeremy Bonnement, he just wrote other things, other books, all the, he had other publications. So if you like his way of painting, if you and the guy is a great painter, no doubt on that. So he's a very, very good painter. But you can find better information on, on other you know you have a better source of information right now for painting miniatures you have a book from Kirikanev you have a, I think it's called a Figopedia or something like that created by Jeremy Bonamont which is good uh, very good I think I never read this book but uh, I read one or two stuff that the way Jeremy Bonamont is thinking about painting and it's very interesting so the, the guy is a great artist uh, you have um, 
you have some uh, some magazines like uh, I wrote an article for them, uh, the Illustrated uh, Historical Artist, and you have the same with Fantasy Artist, uh, and uh, yeah, it's great publication. You have some very good painters in that. I'm not saying because I'm featured in one of the issues, but there are a lot of I mean, greater guys like than myself, you know. Uh, people like Giraldez or others uh, that are great. So yeah, there are a lot of great publications. Specifically, if you're lucky enough to uh, to, to to speak and read English, you have a lot of things to uh, to read and to learn from. And uh, yes, when it comes to the, 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 the great book, I have it too. I'm keeping it as a milestone, you know. It's interesting for the history of, uh, of miniature painting. It's, uh, it's interesting for that, but um, for people who are desperately trying to buy one, I'm just saying don't spend one hundred dollars or euros, you know. This book you have far, far, far better and, uh, and more accurate books um, in in the market right now. But hey, sir, maybe it's I'm seeing for I'm, I'm seeing for for the guys who, who desperately want this book. It's your money. You do whatever you want, but. It's no longer the best book available right now. So, moving to the next harm. Just for good measure, we'll put some stuff here. Yeah. But this, you know, this this scarcity is uh, is just pushing the prices. It's incredible the amount of money. Uh, people can invest in uh, in this type of uh, of, uh, of publication. And it's 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 truly baffling because there are better stuff right now. Cheaper and better. Yeah, that's strange. Maybe th I think there is some kind of a you know um, fashion thing. You know, it's very fashionable to have this book. Maybe it's more a matter of having the book than actually using it. Because uh, yeah, the book from Kirill Kanaev. That's that. That's incredible. You 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 need to 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 be a good painter. I think it's not for beginners at all. <laughs> or you have to be definitely hooked. I mean, uh, if you if you know that you love miniature painting, you've painted one or two miniatures. Not that great, but you know that you love that. Maybe it's good for you because you will uh, learn fast. But um. Most of the time, this book is very difficult to uh, to follow if you uh, if you're a beginner. Yeah, but it's 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 a good one. You have you have some good uh, good stuff in that. Okay, it's not not trying to dismiss this book. Uh, there there there's some good stuff in that. But yes, some dated stuff. You know, I think that the chapter. Uh, um, about um, you know non-metallic metals and stuff like that. And I think it's here. You can see it's kind of old. <laughs> it's really old uh, because um, yeah, non-metallic metals. Right now, the technique have improved a lot. I mean, regardless of aesthetic, um, there are some objective criteria um, that can make a non-metallic metal working or not and definitely uh, seeing the great book right now they're on the not side <laughs> at least for me um, yeah 
specifically when you 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 can read the book from uh, from Kenneth, which is super super complete. Guy put two years of hard work in this book, and I can tell. Yeah, it's showing. It's great. Nah, I'm a kind of a can I simp, you know? <laughs> so. I like big Russian guys. <laughs> hmm. Yep. So now highlights. So there is a little little problem with my way of painting. Here, yeah. If I have something to say, the problem is that uh, I will run off um, not too diluted paint since I'm not using a super fancy. Um, wet palette I'm using just you know um, plastic box uh, in which they're sold, they sold they, they sold uh, they sell sorry a uh, ham uh, and a sponge square sponge uh, and just basic parchment paper uh, the the here I, uh, I just sometimes have too much water in my paint so uh, yeah, I'm kind of reaching this uncomfortable area here, uh, which I will have to remix some stuff to recreate some of my colors. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a good pleasure. To, yeah, it's 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 a good good read. I mean, uh, it's a good reading. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt about it. It's a, it's a good uh, it's a good thing to read, and it's a, a good Kickstarter. Uh, in that uh, activity, of course. But you know, as a uh, teaching book, I mean, uh, only as a teaching book, it's very dated. But it's, it's nice to, to 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 read some stuff. There are some stuff that are not so dated that were very ahead of their times, like the part um, if I remember well, uh, a part about non-metallic metals but using metallic pens. That was very very interesting, and I had the the the. the I I've been lucky enough to uh, see. The miniature, uh, the actual miniature featured in that part, which was a knight with a big sword uh, um, from um, Dark Moon Chronicles, Chronicle de la Lignoire. And uh, yeah, uh, this um, the mini was extremely impressive to uh, to, to to see uh, Ira Ira. And that was very good because right now it's a technique that is making a slight comeback. Okay. to there okay Another thing I will maybe not show uh, here, but uh, if I have, because 
it can happen if I have a little too thick coat. Uh, I have some very, very thin sandpaper and I can sand my paint a little. Something I, I've i done several times uh, on other miniatures. Uh, because I always think of my miniatures to be... to have a nice, smooth uh, surface. I want something very clean. So if I have uh, any, any type of, you know, uh, Thickness visible. I will, I will send it flat. Something I've done quite a lot in some of my miniatures. I uh, I had this. Um, idea of doing that by thinking of another book I read an old one uh, about um, hyper realistic painting and I remember the guy just had this thing uh, in his uh, toolbox using some sandpaper to uh, smooth the paint So this is something uh, I try to avoid, but if I have to, uh, I will not hesitate, I will do it. Here we are right now. We got something there. Just another mid tone here to just narrow this part a little more. It's uh, off-white, I can use white, I'm just using off-white here, that one. Uh, because I just don't want to run out of pure white, so I can use pretty much any type of uh, white or almost white stuff, as long as it's, sorry, um, matte, because uh, Matte, co matte uh, paint will uh, will uh, be of a better surface to work on later. So yeah. as long as it's matte and not too diluted, this will do the job. There, for example, I will put some of my uh, secondary highlight here, just for not catching too much attention, but uh, help you to read the, the, the volume. Another thing you can do is uh, using you 
can use some kind of a way to, to load your brush. It's not exactly the same technique as loaded brush, but uh, you can take just some water in your brush, just a little amount of a uh, very light color, and you can use that for just trying to straighten your gradation like that, you know. The more I put paint, the more I have, uh, the more I empty the tip of my brush, the more I have water running through, the more it's diluted. So therefore, the more transparent uh, the thing is going. So it's a good way when you just are a little lost in your gradations, you can use that. You can use all the brush. You can use that technique if you don't want to um, add information, you know, if you just want to uh, straighten things and tune things a little. Uh, yeah, it's just that and it's appearing grey because of the, yeah, the transparency, because I just put one, two, maybe for some parts, three layers, but not more. It's just here as a guideline, uh, you know, I'm just putting that just for helping my uh, further highlights, my future highlights to be uh, more uh, powerful, you know, because uh, this white, off-white, grayish stuff will push under, it will, it will help uh, the color to really pop. And also, uh, it's a good way to um, have a first interpretation on the miniature. You just put some some stuff. It's ugly, but it's not a problem. It's just a way to uh, to build some ideas. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I'm just putting that there. So, there I will just use a slightly colder mix, uh, maybe with that. That's a little cold. Okay, just to, s to check, to test. Okay, the veins. Nice, but it's popping too much. Better, 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 better. Okay, nice here. Okay, now more lights, trying to be more saturated. here. And I'm trying I'm trying always to, 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 to bear that in mind also complex things are always the result of simple steps. You know, trying to always keep that in mind. Um, always to try to avoid overworking. This is my nemesis, my own nemesis, overwork. This is uh, something I'm struggling with uh, since the beginning of my, uh, my, my, uh, my journey in uh, miniature painting. More than 20 years ago. <laughs> Okay.
So you uh, just close and have some problems with my tablet. Definitely not a good day for me. Uh, there. I'll add some greens. There too. Some greens here. Okay. So now we'll try to patch everything because there I still have some you no know, white visible, some black also. So I will try to just correct that, being sure that everything is covered with a nice color. <clears throat> I'm pretty much always beginning with uh, flesh because I will have to work, work, work on that for, you know, tuning everything. For now, I seem, it seems that I have enough contrast, but when I will put every other part, the uh, thing will be not enough contrasted, I can foresee it, so I will have to, uh, to work more on that. Definitely, we'll have to buy a new, uh, a new headphone, new headphones because it's no longer working. So there we are. Put some lights on that part too. Okay. Here, just try to put more green. Okay. Always working loosely, but eventually we will reach the point of having something nice, sweet, thin and blended. Yeah, 
that, that to there. Okay, the same on this part, which is, I think it's uh, some kind of, yeah, top of um, terrace major, just put in just one volume for that complete part, but uh, I think it's that terrace major and that part here. Okay, we're catching the light and blend a little more. <laughs> You're jacked. Day, I would definitely love to have this type of a very bulky uh, muscle, bulky physique, but yeah, big, big body. I even considered to uh, medicate myself, I have to say, but yeah, no. Was not dedicated enough in training and uh, the medication was not a good idea, I think. Oh, yeah. Definitely would love to have those big arms with these big triceps. Okay. <clears throat> Green. There. <laughs> yeah. I could imagine. <laughs> hmm. Not for uh, for several for several years, I've been kind of dedicated to uh, you know move weight, work out, but um, it's been a long time <laughs> since I've stopped. It's, uh, it's very difficult to do everything having uh, because I think this type of um, activity you, you you need to be very dedicated you need to uh, work out a lot it's, it's a lot of dedication so yeah I had to make some choices and I choose Figure painting. <laughs> well, there are some 
they, they used to have some very great uh, great physics in France, like uh, Pascal Lumini guy was pretty much built like that. <laughs> very impressive. Just for uh, uh, connecting with uh, th this type of uh, you know uh, body with uh, with sculpting um, the uh, the Shiflet brothers they definitely have something um, with this type of body they have this way of rendering it it's very natural I mean natural. Uh, the, 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 not the look in itself, but the way they are rendering the thing uh, is really, really, really good. If you like sculpting, you should, you should check their Facebook uh, group. It's a very nice place to be and uh, you can see their work, it's very interesting. Here we are. Remove everything that's too much. When I have too much paint. And that's it. Rinse and repeat. Okay, another case here of um, dark shadow. If you're just looking from that, or my light is not perfectly zenithal, I think light will come from that part. So for now, I'm just working very loosely, but I will try to uh, focus a little more from the light coming just the same way it comes from to this guy. Um, but uh, yeah, here it's definitely something in the shadows that I would have to draw the volumes. So using something less saturated and also a little colder to have a light, to catch the light but not too much catch the the attention not no not lose the the, the the gaze of the spectator so this that's a way of how to priorize your lights your highlights here that's also a uh, case of trying to blend a lot. If it's truly blended, um, this will not catch the attention also either. I mean, uh, you 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 have uh, you can add those two two ideas first: less saturated, a little color, and also uh, very very blended to have some kind of a flat aspect, almost flat, you know. It can be very interesting to draw each and every volumes and um, just keep the attention where you want to keep it. This, of course, is some kind of an, an advanced trick, but uh, this is something I'm definitely using a lot. That's why I have a lot of various trends of colors here. Uh, for example, I will 
try to blend more so I will expand my lights in my shadows having some nice neat very blended surface no with just few brush strokes that's why also I'm saying that you don't always need an airbrush. An airbrush can be convenient and I will definitely use one one day. I, I have one, I'm not using it currently. It's a great tool, but it's only a tool. Uh, you can achieve great results with a brush. And you can have some very, very, very blended paints with just a brush. Water and paint. That's it. And it's not that time consuming. Yes, it's time consuming, but um, with a proper method like that, you can achieve great results with not too much work. And with a very good grasp upon the results. Yeah. So now I will have to fix because pretty much every idea is in place. I will have to work on the ends, but uh, the next steps will be just fixing everything and uh, having that nice tuning of this uh, this this uh, this skin here. Just draw. Also, I have to say, uh, knowing anatomy is kind of required. I mean, here, if you just relying on your 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 your, your washes like uh, you know your don't know the name right now. Uh, it's no longer Dave Mud, It's New Annoyed, I think, or something like that. It's, lots of memes about that. Uh, if you're just relying on that to know where to put your colors, you will have you will experience a plateau in your in your progression. Uh, here I know that there is uh, the great dorsal muscle here and I know it's just sculpted a little but not it's not truly um, extremely present so I just know that there is a muscle here and I should draw it. I should um, draw some highlights so here I'm using my uh, desaturated mix for that just for that here drawing a nice line here will help to uh, to give some borders and some uh, precision to this this part which is a synthetic way to sculpt the terrace major the infraspinatus and the terrace minor but it's not visible here but they just put one blob of volume it's not, it's not even clay and uh, but it's great because it's it's working I mean uh, it's uh, it's working uh, perfectly. Yeah. That's something that can also help a lot. If you're if you're a painter, you definitely should try to sculpt a little. Can help a lot for painting. There we are. Look at this dorsal, dorsalis, I don't know if they use the Latin terminology. Okay, not perfect, but this will be enough to work on. Just a few steps and uh, that's it. Oh, sorry, Joe, I didn't sew the, 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 the... I 
I didn't see your message. Oh yeah, one of your friends. Yeah, I got medication, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, you will not develop that super big strength like that. But uh, yeah, aesthetically speaking, I uh, I kind of enjoy the aesthetic, you know, aesthetic of uh, those big bond, uh, those big bodybuilders. I know, uh, truly uh, swollen guys. I was not truly into the strange thing, I was definitely into the aesthetic thing. Same for this part here. Okay. Oh, check! You, you, you were checking camera. Yeah, definitely want to try that one one day. Yeah, always out of stock. Yeah, that's why it's not something uh, you know. I, I need to have a reliable source for uh, buying my paints because uh, even if I manage to to buy some, uh, if I have any problems. I don't want to experience in shortage. I need to be able to buy some replacements if I have any problem, if I spill my paints, if I forgot to close the, 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 the paint pot, anything, anything. I just don't want to have this over scarcity impression, over scarcity feeling uh, with uh, with with something like that, so I I need to 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 to, to be able to buy things. Um, so yeah, maybe it's not for me. So yeah, it's a bummer. I would love to 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 try these things. But if I can't buy them, it's not. I mean, I I know that this will be stressful for me, so it's not worthy of that. I don't want to be stressed about my paints. That's why I'm using Vallejo. Easy to find. Uh, very, uh, I mean, uh, apart from Games Workshop, I don't like Games Workshop paints. Uh, but um, yeah, Vallejo ones. Perfect. Not pricey. Easy to find. You can find pretty much everywhere here. And if they lack stock of one color or another, I can order it and I know that I will find some. Yeah, there is one thing though, uh, they're, they're monopigment and just for that uh, it's it's really interesting and uh, that was the main reason I would love to use them because uh, monopigments is definitely the Rolls Royce for painters. Uh, when, you, when you're painting, um, you're painting 
figures for display for you you definitely need to have that because um nothing is as powerful as uh, monopigment colors you can you, you can mix everything you can do everything it's better than pretty much any type of ready to use colors so for paint mixers like me it's definitely definitely a good choice i think but there is room for um, Vallejo to um, release some type of uh, artists, you know, their artistic range, but trying to use the formula they have for for the hobby paints, but trying to, 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 to put their artistic range into it would be great, you know, to have this a very solid paint, matte paint, but with mono, uh, mono pigment formula, formulas. It would be great. I mean, they would love that if, if they if they just say that they will release something like that. I will pre-order it. I hate pre-ordering, but for that I could definitely <laughs> pre-order the thing because I really love Vallejo. And, um, yeah, it could be a great thing to use for me. I need those mono pigments. Okay, we'll do the hand just for having a nice break from the other parts here. So, strikes, 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 little stripe here. Here we are. Sorry. I think here. And uh, yeah, uh, green, 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 green hands. I need green hands. And I'll try to use darker green. The difference, I think, will be in the, you know, the, the, the formula in itself. Uh, having good artists, truly good artist paints, uh, are pretty much always glossy. So I know you can, you can overcome this issue with varnishes, but uh, yeah, I prefer to not, you know, add a lot of stuff like varnish, varnish, and if I had to correct something, I will have to re-put some varnish. So yeah, I don't, I don't want to, you know, have this type of problems. And the the other thing uh, is that even I I, I paint uh, I paint one one figure with uh, only artist paints. It was um, uh, liquid heavy body, uh, and I also had some sommelier. Great paints, uh, really good paints. Uh, in uh, you know uh, ultra, I don't know thin stuff. So it's, it was not you know it was not student grade. It was truly the the the, the great stuff, the fancy stuff. And uh, yeah, um, the problem was that it's it's they lack coverage pretty much. Every paint, even even the opaque ones, you know, they, they have this square showing if it's uh, opaque, translucent, or or transparent, and even for the opaque ones, uh, they were translucent. Uh, so yeah, the, the 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 formulas for figure painting, um, I think they have they they are more of um you know they have this. Um, product added as a some kind of a load you know you you, you put in the in the paint for having uh, for increasing the coverage and uh, the, having a better um, behavior on the surface when you're using it on the 3d surface so yeah I think difference is that uh, you can also dilute a lot more your uh, your 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 hobby paints because they're extremely, uh, extremely, you know, 
resistant to water. You can put a lot, lot, lot of water. You can, you will experience overbinding, uh, underbinding, but this will work anyway. Yeah, that it can be. You know, it's it's an overall feeling about artist uh, paints. But uh, with Chimera, I don't I don't know. I think Chimera, if they are mono pigments, you will have some you know earth pigment that will cover nothing. You can have some opaque red that can be quite hard to work with, like naphtol red, which is kind of opaque, uh, but not 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 like those paints but it can be quite opaque. Uh, I used uh, some um, naphtol red uh, from Liquitex ink it was kind of uh, yeah for an ink very very powerful so I don't know there is something in the artistic range uh, and yeah it's there are some transparencies, some issues, some coming from the artistic range and from the fact that it's just the way they're formulated, or you can have these issues coming from the fact that this is then some kind of a nature of the pigment. Yeah, exactly. It's all green, no opaque. But this is uh, this is something I would need to 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 try to know if it's the, the, the formulation or if it's the, the nature of the pigments they're using in their in their paint. interested in uh, trying new stuff that's why I need to to, um, to paint also with my uh, my Equitex, uh, uh, acrylic gouache Just trying the thing so hands uh, there put some greens Put greens everywhere, it's not that big of a deal. Here. And here. Oh yeah, do some jazz. You know that I can find some uh, in uh, nail art stores. I know one or two nail art stores, uh, nail, nail art online stores that are selling them. Can't remember the name, but uh, with a good uh, good use of Google, I will uh, find them. Joe Sanjas, yes, I know that um, uh, Koreans I think are used to use a lot of Joe Sanjas because it's easy to find, easy to purchase. Uh, I think there are a couple of um, of um, box arts for young miniatures being painted with that, with Joe Sanchez. Oh yeah, I don't know this uh, this line. Atelier? No, no, I know that. I 
une sonnelier. Atelier, no. never heard of it. Ok, that's good. Um, Oh yeah. Have to break it because it's coming from Australia, but via UK. Or maybe uh, the EU hasn't any type of uh, you know. Of um, agreement with uh, with Australia. Oh, that's great. Hmm, that's good. Sounds very good. Yeah. Being able to reopen those paints just take some of that. We'll use a little loaded brush here. Here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Priorize my lights and shadows. So here. There we are. <clears throat> ah, yeah. A lot of um, artistic, um, I mean, artist range of um, acrylics are really, really thick and buttery. And uh, for me, I'm not talking about this type of brand because I don't know this brand, but for the, the one I used, like um, Liquitex and Olier Extra, uh, that was truly a turn off for me. I, I had to over dilute them because 
it's not truly interesting. I mean, for oils, uh, it makes sense. Um, it's also for figure painting, you can use oils, they are thicker, you can use thicker coats and thin the thing right on top of your mini, you know, by blending, by spreading the paint. So yeah, there is definitely a lot of things to be done with that medium. But when it comes to, um, when it comes to, to, to mini painting with acrylics, uh, this was some kind of massive turn off for me. Um, I would love to find more liquid, fluid uh, paints like Liquitex, but uh, soft body. That's why I uh, want to try to, uh, to work with uh, actually gouache. It's more fluid. But for something that you can reopen and work like oils, yeah, it's a good, um, it's a good, a good feature to have that. I mean, a good, um, good idea. Just here, I will rebuild a little of my gradations. So here I will glaze but I will use loaded brush to, to just glaze without losing too much of my highlights. So that's why I'm doing that and spreading the thing here like that, gently remove the thing that I have. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's uh, it's a bit closer to uh, Winsor & Newton Artisan. Oh, you just, uh, just said that it was not the same. I don't know. It's really sounding like our kids. Here on the belly, and voila. Nice, good gradation. Kind of must be done. Not too much work, I'm just basically trying to clean everything before moving on other parts. And there we are. Okay. Should try that. I don't know if I can find them in France. Maybe it would be difficult. Crap. Too much paint. Too much paint. That's it. Oh yeah. Okay. Scarcity is making the price high. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, that's it. Cleaning. <clears throat> now I can pretty much just hit a little bit down. Just 
a little bit. No, I was talking about overworking, that's why I'm currently doing, so it's not good. I will move to the next hand. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you said me, you said to me that too, yeah. They were coming from Australia. Can be very expensive to uh, import them. Yeah. In Australia, they have some harsh, um, harsh policies when it comes to um, overseas. Um, Oversee trading markets, you know. Um, things. I think they're very protective about their businesses and uh, the thing they're selling and uh, importing. No, no. I think, oh, you think, Simon Beasley, yeah, yeah, definitely, something, something like that, yeah, <laughs> but there is, um, there is room for, uh, for, for, for brands that can be a little, uh, you know, bold, uh, trying to, to have a more, Seri serious by serious, I mean more technically professional brands of things, if you know what I mean. Um, I would definitely benefit from that if uh, something like something like you know uh, a chimera, but available, always available with a nice. Uh, Is, I mean, uh, an, a good a good supply, not as scarce. <clears throat> yeah, it's been a while since I used loaded brush. I almost forgot how freaking fast it is to achieve a nice gradation with this technique. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Get the idea. Eight rows for for your mail. If tracking number. Oh yeah, okay. 
You see there with the standard class, but they're extremely surprised. Okay. And the parcel made it? I mean, they, they, they received it? I would be very um, stressed about that. If I had to, uh, to send some stuff overseas like that. Okay, it's great. Just like that. Clean, neat, okay. <clears throat> Great, that's cool. If the guy was happy, it's the, it's the best result. Best ending you can have. <laughs> uh, yeah. And here. Just... I'm running out of paint and I don't like that. That's also why I want a reliable source uh, for my paints. I want to use them more. But that secret formula, no, <laughs> a nightmare. It's, uh, the secret formula you can browse it if you uh, dare. <laughs> The secret from you, you will find a, an awful, awful cartoon <laughs> with a SpongeBob. But it's a parody, and uh, it's mm, disgusting. <laughs> it's funny as hell. Very eerie, you know, very uncanny. Uh, it's making people uncomfortable. <laughs> it's funny. The secret from you. I want more flavor. <laughs> <laughs> That's an awful mess, but so funny. Love that. This cartoon is so funny. Okay. Warmer tones for the inside of the hand. More of that secret formula here. And a little red to saturate. Just like a Dalek. Desaturate. Desaturate. Here we are. Great. Then I don't have enough water. Ah, uh, yeah. 
it was important for I think for people that this thing just went in the worst way possible. But uh, I, I expect in a few years that thing will be uh, pretty much okay-ish. I will not be harsh on uh, on Brexit. I know that for for businesses it's awful. But there is, you know, this whole. Um, Political stuff surrounding the thing, and uh, yeah, it's almost as if it was a deliberate choice to make things um, harder than they should have been. Don't know, but um, yeah, kind of limited to in English to talk about that. But uh, I read a few stuff, and I uh, can. Can understand why some people voted for uh, leaving the EU since the EU is costing a lot. Uh, for English people, I don't know, but for for us in France, it's definitely costing us a lot. And uh, yeah, having a grasp upon your own market uh, should be a prerogative for any type of country, I think. So yeah, a bummer for uh, for business and small businesses because they are sacrificed in the altar of politicians. The author of politics, sorry, by politicians. That's truly something awful, I think. For for miniature industry, it's um, it's 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 hell. It's basically an inferno. Not even imagine like you know RP models, for example. How they are trying to deal with that. Uh, I mean, it should be very difficult for them too. So yeah. Yeah, that's completely crazy. I mean, it's it's completely crazy to 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 do that. It's trying to I don't know be strange, but be mean to uh, to England. Too stupid. Why being mean to 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 the UK? I mean, stupid. Should keep some good uh, business relations. Now we are experiencing some shortages in France uh, with uh, Games Workshop stuff, you know, like uh, the, um, the the cow's black, not just the cow's black, but you know those uh, undercoats. Uh, <laughs> there are some shortages. So maybe it's Covid, maybe it's Brexit, maybe it's a little of that stuff. So each of these reasons, maybe it's other thing, I don't know, but there are some shortages. And... I think which is the most annoying thing is, uh, you know, this feeling of being, um, you know, sacrificial lump. You, know, you have, you are a small business, yeah. You, who will wreck you? That's it. Okay, don't, don't make it big deal. Okay, just accept it. That's it. <laughs> this is this is something very very disgusting. I think. I mean, this whole free market stuff should be should be for small businesses. I definitely think that uh, 
The smaller your business, the freer you should be. Very simple. Simplistic. But, yeah, this is only some, this is the only kind of just as you know, I can imagine. Small business, you should be freaking free. Not everything, of course, but uh, you know what I mean? Not being annoyed by over paperwork, over a lot of things, over regulations, over rules, over everything. And feather a thing here. Great. That's nice. I will just redraw a little bit of that just here. So we have that, now I will have to fix some stuff on the shoulder, of course. This big deltoid here is not very good looking, so we'll try to fix that here. Doing some kind of a glaze. Yeah. Yeah. Jackson Art. Never purchased from uh, from them. Okay. So here, just. Finish to fix that before moving and other other parts. And that little. We have a bit of work, but um, okay, that's it. So, what are these already colored bar? 
Let's okay, I'll stick to the um, official uh, official stuff for the most part. Not every part, but from the most part. Okay. Too bad. Here, just remix some intermediary colors for blending those kind of harsh highlights here. Shadowing to, sh to have some shades here. Put some shadows. Dark stuff. Here it is. Uh, I have some cat hair. Yeah, okay. Love my cat, but uh, it's shedding time right now. Cat is putting freaking fur everywhere. But he's sweet. Love cats. Okay, great. That's it. <sighs> Thing with this method, it can be kind of time consuming when you because it, it gives you a big amount of um, control upon the results so it's truly very interesting to um, you know refine 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 and the more you refine the more the stuff is looking good so It's really interesting because uh, we went from something very disgusting uh, with a lot of um, of big uh, of, of big whitey grayish stuff, kind of disgusting, uh, and upon working, working, working on that, we managed to have powerful highlights, nice shadows, and. Uh, very progressive blending everywhere if I need to, I mean, uh, harsh stuff if I want to keep it harsh or very, very soft if I want to, to have something very, very nice and sweet. It's very interesting this way of working these figures, specifically those you know, figures with big volumes it's also very interesting for women. If you want to have a lot of, you know, subtle things to, to think. Uh, oh, my, my cat is, uh, is kind of short hair, but uh, it's pretty hair everything. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> Uh, do you have any big, uh, big art supply shop? Uh, yeah, maybe um, you can try uh, Le Géant des Beaux-Arts. Uh, you know, fine arts, giant. Uh, this is kind of big and you can find some nice and great stuff. Uh, we also have um, one of their challengers, Rougier uh, Play. Uh, which is spelled uh, R O U G I E R uh, E, so E T. 
play just P uh, P L E with an accent. And uh, yeah, they they are very. Their offer is kind of complete. Uh, I know that Rougier Play they're selling some uh, not all the range, but some by whole uh, model colors. My model colors, the the the, the one uh, labeled Prince August are from uh, from miniature gaming shops, but this one model color very hope uh, is coming from uh, from OGA Play. Twitter notification, which is uh, not. Okay. Ah, because I am subscriber or something like that. So I have a I have notifications when she tweets something. No. Yeah, you can, and they they are kind of good, you know. Maybe you can you could check also another thing, but I don't know if the the they, they are selling stuff overseas. I don't know. Uh, you have also Elio, H E L I O. Oh yeah, okay. Interesting, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm just trying to fix the back here. Not fix, but you know, refine a little the back. Oh, I know that we have a. Never order anything uh, from them, but uh, there is uh, Adam Montmartre also. Uh, but it's a, it's a store, it's a Parisian store. They have a lot of. Um, they have a great offer. Uh, a lot of things. Hi, Gail! Hi, hi! Welcome, welcome! But yeah, we we are kind of kind of lucky in France because we have a lot of art supply stores here. I mean, even if even in my in my uh, my, uh, my city, you know, uh, I mean, not in the the one I'm currently in, but the one very close to 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 to, to me, uh, not we have something like one two. Uh, three, maybe four or five stores. Just in not. It's crazy. <laughs> we have two uh two fine art giant, a fine art giant. Uh, and you 
Bak um, Two Rougier play and one Elio plus plus another one which is uh, completely independent study pad so yeah something like five six stores man two two giants two video uh two two giants two regi two regi play one uh, ilio and yes one study pad six stores <laughs> six stores we can do pretty much a lot of things without counting you know every other Art supply you can find from uh, from uh, Mr. Monsieur Bricolage. We <laughs> say Mr. Bricolage because they, they made us some kind of a mistake by saying Mr. with an M and an R, which is in French is does not exist. Uh, so <laughs> it's Monsieur Bricolage, but we say Mr. Bricolage just as a joke. And yeah, there uh, there are other hardware store, and they have fine art, uh, fine art stuff here and we have also other stuff we are very very lucky for that oh yeah okay let's hope that they can rebuild one day something uh, for a nice uh, nice supply for for art material because it's very important since creative activities are pretty much very interesting, uh, money-wise, I mean, uh, economy speaking. And uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Gal. Yeah, I'm working like that because um, I think it's very efficient. And uh, since I'm keen to overwork stuff, I try to make a lot of mess and have a very ugly result at the beginning and just try to refine the thing it's a way for me to work um in a you know less stressful way but yeah i'm very happy that you like uh, what you're seeing here is light a i really like to use loaded brush but with this, you know, sweeping motion. I think it's, I don't know, something like that. It's very, there is something quite kind of magical, you know, you have something not very good, you can use this technique and just, it's glazing, this, it's glazing every, every part. It's just putting order in that, uh, in the mess. I think it's very interesting. I really like this technique. Deep house, not hard house, deep house fan. But I don't really like that. You see, so they can make my arts, it's full of art supply stores you could find pretty much. Oh, yeah, great. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, you know that the crisis just destroyed that. Can't even imagine the. Harsh reality, you know, striking like that. It's very, very brutal. I think. Very, very brutal. Yeah, not so bright future. Okay.
ยากYeah, which is um, understandable, but kind of almost strange because um, you know, um, for I mean, yes, money wise, I can understand why they are the first to be uh, destroyed, but. Um, But yes, we. Um, it's just as if they, they knew that the, the craziest, not the, you know, apocalyptic, apocalyptic one, <laughs> um, uh, Greece has experienced. But you know, those uh, those markets, those um, are are, um, how can I say, refuge, refuges, for 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 a lot of people. So yeah, it's kind of strange that uh, the. They are the, the, the first to be uh, to be destroyed like that, but yeah, maybe in Greece you you had something very 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 brutal. So yeah, maybe it's it's uh, it's uh, it's kind of um you know it's have to deal with the, the the nature of the crisis. Oh yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. See the limitations of the technique. Yeah, the then Zenithal highlights. Um, I mean, this is there is something very strange in the terminology because um, people are trying to. This there is something. It's not something made genuinely on purpose, but there is some kind of mix between the, the technique, it's just you know, having lights coming from the Zenith. And um, using the airbrush stuff, um, you know, uh, specifically in French, uh, we are mixing the thing, you know, don't know why we should talk about pre-highlighting stuff, not uh, not just the way we are using the words like uh, je fais un zenithal, which basically means nothing. Uh, the, the basics basic words should be uh, basic rendering should be uh, I am doing a pre highlight using Denithal uh, Denithal light. Uh, the the thing though um, here it's kind of Zenithal stuff. I'm seeing light from above my figure, but it's not. I had a little tweak. You know, little twitch. I'm tweaking things for having lights coming from mostly that part. But I'm thinking like that. It's not truly showing right now because I'm just, you know, putting ideas here and there and refining stuff. But um, I want this to match that one. And also, if you want something quite natural, um, you have to think that light is bouncing everywhere. So having a super sharp zenithal light and only that can be nice, aesthetically speaking, but you can also, if you want something more outdoor, more, I don't know, another type of result, you can think of light bouncing everywhere. So you can have free. Thing is, it's interesting to learn stuff and after that to digest the thing and move along, you know, go further. So it's great for you to have um, experienced the um, Denithal way of painting figures. You can uh, you can check um, the Spanish guys. They use a lot of these, um, you know, almost lateral lightnings. Um, this not so zenithal lights, you know, putting a basic zenithal idea, but you know, twitching the thing, changing stuff, or having something more drastic. Sorry, a little bird.
it's really uh, really interesting yes to to try to find new new ways and specifically right now we have um, access to a lot a lot of information i mean tons and tons and tons of information about miniature painting sculpting a lot of things are available it's great it's great it's wonderful Mine? <laughs> no, <laughs> not Spanish, but yeah, using kind of uh, a lot of that stuff. But uh, now you can uh, check uh, mm, channels. No, I have painters. I don't know if they have channels. People like uh, Jose Manuel Palomares Nunez. He was um, was there for a long time. The guy is great. Um, his painter is is as good as a painter as is as an, uh, as a sculptor the guy is, cre is just creepy good uh yeah i made one of the most beautiful masterpieces of uh, miniature artistry you can imagine uh you can check um the he was i think he was the first winner of the crystal brush and uh yeah that was kind of a miniature he made. Uh, it was great. It was, I mean, the thing was the masterpiece. It was wonderful. So uh, you can check him, Jose Manuel Palomares. So uh, Jose uh, J O S E with an accent. Palomares uh, P O uh, sorry uh, P A L O M A R E S and uh, I think it's Nunez at the end, but Jose Manuel Palomares and Manuel just Manuel M A uh, N U E L. That is great. Uh, you can maybe you can find some articles online or stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe others, but. Um, he is definitely the name I remember the most. And just the fact that, you know, we used to have something called Spanish school. You can mix with Italian school also. I don't know if it's that relevant to, to talk about, you know, schools of make, making stuff. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Jose Manuel Palomares, you can, you can check. Uh, you can also check um, what the group Alabarda is making. It's a it's a miniature painting club, and they have a blog, and they they have some great painters, also. E what was I going to do? Okay, see, yeah, I remember. I was cleaning this back. This bag that gave me some troubles while uh, undercoating the figure. I had an awful, awful uh, texture here. Don't know why. I had to sand the thing. Now it's good, but uh, here. I will use some over diluted washes just for washing the recesses and also glazing the recesses to uh, uniformize everything here. And that's it. It's a glazing wash. <laughs> Doing this type of joke because glazing, washing, they're pretty much the same thing. It's not applied exactly the same, but uh, it's pretty much the same thing. And yes, when it comes to this uh, very, 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 very uh, super contrasted style, uh, I, I'm painting like that. Everything, you know, like um, from uh, from from stuff like that, Games Workshop figures to um, 
to uh, to historical ones. I know that uh, in some contests in France, uh, they don't like this way of painting historical models because uh, for them, high contrast uh, equals uh, equals fantasy, which is stupid. It's just nonsensical. But yeah, there are some people thinking like that. You you putting high contrast on your figures, so you are. Uh, uh, you're a fantasy, fantasy figure painter, not an historical one. Because uh, it's well known that, um, you know, throughout history, uh, people and their, 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 their gear, their, uh, their clothes were, were gray, you know, very, 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 very grayish. Now, of course, not. If you're painting some uh, some uh, some some medieval stuff, you will uh, you will have some very very nice saturated colors, very vibrant. Because um, unlike what Hollywood used to show us, um, medieval times were pretty colorful. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. You have this trend of I think it's no longer that true. Things have evolved. But yeah. Not everything is bad, you know, you know, I, I had some very great experiences and very, very unexpected areas. <laughs> I, I took a silver medal for historical figures with very high contrast in uh, Seva, which is, uh, you know, some kind of a strong place uh, for historical figures. So, yeah, it's not that that's a problem, uh, but there are some people thinking like that, but not everyone. I, I don't want to, you know, dismiss everything and to diss on those people because there's some great stuff. You know that the, the Sevres contest is one of the best I had the chance to take part in. Uh, it's great. You have wonderful people. Um, people are great. It's just a little expensive. Uh, it's a little expensive, but um, the, the the I mean the all background stuff, you know, the, the, the location is great, people are very nice, uh, you have a lot of very good painters here, you have also um, uh, a lot of stores, uh, you can talk with Alexandre Cortina, for example, which is wonderful, it was there, I just talked with the guy, and he was lovely, I mean, the man is, uh, the man, the man is basically a painting semi-god, and he was extremely humble and very very simple and very nice and very easy to 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 discuss with so yeah um, it's not all French I will not you know dismiss everything you there are some like every everywhere some old farts and uh, you have also very nice people so no, there's I had some great experience in French contest but there are some you know stuff yeah that are not that great but not everything is bad i would definitely love to uh, to do um some contest again Yeah. And there's also this idea, you know, I'm painting a lot with uh, non-metallic metals and things like that. And for a lot of people, um, and I can understand why, um, non-metallic metal is for uh, fantasy figures or flat figures, not historical one. So yeah, I can understand why they're thinking like that. Um, because it's um, you know you have this um, this this specific test uh, with non-metallic metals into their eyes it's definitely something that belong to another category no matter if it's good I mean people have very high opinion about flat figures and yeah sure they're great it's beautiful I, I love 
flat figures, I'm not painting them myself, but I I love to to to, to just see the, the beauty, the sheer beauty of flat figures. I, I love that. You know, if you can check check check, um, I think it's uh, uh, Catherine Cesario. Uh, I, I'm sorry if it's not Catherine. I know it's Madame Cesario. Um, unfortunately. She is no longer with us, but she was definitely a master, a master at painting flat figures. Um, but yeah, for, for, for some people, um, those techniques belong to another category, not this full, um, uh, what we call home boss, uh, uh, those full volumes figures. So yeah, th there, there is something I can understand. It's not. You know, there is tradition um, against innovation, but it's it can be deeper than that. But yeah, uh, flat figures, great. This is Ayo, absolutely unbelievable. The year she passed away, um, a lot of contests just feature her work and, uh, you know, dedicate the, the edition um, to her to her name because she was extremely... Uh, uh, she was an extremely acknowledged master at uh, painting flat figures. It's, uh, it's, it's wonderful. I painted one, only one flat figure. It was not a pure flat figure, it was, it was more low relief. Um, we we were some kind of having a bad wording in France. We a lot of people are mixing things with, uh, you know, um, uh, what we can call half rounded figures of half volume figures and, uh, you know, demi rond boss. And, Kind of strange. Oh yeah, and uh, you know it's uh, it's been a few years that it's a trend right now to have um, uh, NMM uh, NMM in, uh, in 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 historical figures. It's just that for some people, most likely people from the very 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 older generation, uh, they see it as a you know. Um, some kind of a natural movement from uh, flat figures to, uh, to, 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 to full volume figures. But uh, yeah, it's been uh, more than 10 years of uh, NMM in, 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 in historical figures, of course, of course. But there is always some people that, can, that are kind of reluctant uh, toward these ideas. You know. But right now, there is no longer that true. I think it's pretty much accepted to have um, non-metallic metal in, uh, in historical figures. Now, I will change a little. I uh, will uh, work on other parts because uh, I'm kind of bored to <laughs> work on the skin, to say, to, to, to say the truth. Uh, but I will uh, have to work a little more on that because um, it's uh, far from finished. But I want to work on other parts because when it comes to color, uh, not just color, but most of the time for colors you you know everything is interdependent uh, you're changing something and um, it changes the balance of the whole figure uh, for example here I know that I have a lot of contrasts but 
when I will uh, put some paint and highlight and uh, work on other parts surrounding this area, I, I'm almost sure that I will have to uh, increase the amount of contrast I have on that belly. And specifically, it's specifically true uh, while working on bigger figures um, in which you know you have to take good attention to have a very believable way of um, pre-rising your lights, your colors, your gradations to not you know to not go too far. And most of the time we begin with skin tone and we end up seeing oh. Maybe I went too far. I will maybe have to change stuff. If you're thinking like that, stop working on skin tone and work on other parts because most likely you will end up having not enough contrast in your skin tone, actually. It's very strange. It's very, very strange. But there is this, um, you know, the colors can be very tricky. Your eyes can trick you a lot. And um, yes. There I worked a lot on the skin because there are a lot of areas, it's big, it's... Uh, but I know that upon working on other surfaces, I will have to increase the amount of contrast I put on that skin. Most likely. So, we'll work on uh, maybe the black. So, this guy is wearing a black coat, I think, something black clothes, shirt, no, no. Uh, I will stick to the uh, official artwork, which is uh, which is uh, which is uh, black. Uh, this this thing, this shirt, uh, black. Uh, the uh, pants will be something like khaki. I will try to keep it, but I will add some. Uh, some, uh, I'm gonna say, some texture, yeah. Uh, so here I will use what I call, not me, I call that way, but it's, uh, I didn't invent anything, so, uh, but what we can call a warm black. I really like to work with a warm black because if you're working with a cold black, uh, I think you end up having something that looks it's a lot um, clean, you know, it's, it's, it's just giving us some kind of a clean look because, you know, if it's cold, it's most likely bluish, bluish black, you know, if you, if, you, if you want to send a little trick, you can put a little amount of blue, very deep blue in your black and this will deepen your black. Um, but yeah, using, you know, this bluish highlights, you will end up having something, you know, like a very healthy, nice looking uh, leather uh, for an orc. Yeah, <laughs> well, most likely you want something to be, you know, distressed, used, drained, and pretty much destroyed, actually, and dirty. So, warm black, but it's not that simple. You can use warm black. Uh, it depends on the context, of course. Uh, warm black is not always dirty looking. It's far more complex than that, but here I'm very uh, simplifying stuff, for explaining a little my way of thinking right now about this model. Oh, you really like yeah, metal? Yeah, okay. True to a TMP painted with an uh, MM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a long time that I saw this technique we talked about earlier. We talked about the um, uh, the great book, you know, the uh, Grand Livre de la Figurine, a great figure painting book. Uh, and in that, you have an article uh, from um, uh, famous David in which he explained how he uh, worked um, with, uh, with um, metallic paints with this NMM logic, which is great. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good advice, yeah, definitely. Put a little bit of, uh, of something, yeah. 
really don't do yeah it was interesting to add uh, you know some kind of um contrast on top of the value stuff uh had some you know if you have something quite cold uh, you can just warm a little your black with red for example and uh this would be great because um you will have uh, something that will give another information which is very interesting and uh, also uh, the the opposite if you have something quite warm you can use very to give some depth to your to your black by adding a small amount of blue so yeah definitely definitely it's a good uh, very good advice So you will hear a little shit <laughs> noise. I don't know if shit is a proper onomatopoeia um, um, in English, but in French, this is what we use when you open a bottle. <laughs> a pop bottle. That's that's a drink of a boomer. <laughs> it's uh, rickless, which is something. Very difficult to find nowadays. Peppermint soda. I love that. Could kill for having a small bottle of that. Nectar from the gods. <laughs> With a lot of sugar in it. So, uh, black here. Oh, my. Uh, I hope model color black. Oh yeah. I uh, Ma Marco Frizzoni said I will uh, save the name for later because uh, I never watch anything from the guy. I don't know. I don't even know who he is. So uh, I will try to yeah. Just. Save the name, Marco Frizzoni. Frizzoni, yeah, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, kind of masculinish style. That's good. Okay, so my black here, put some two dots. Now, uh, I will simplify the thing because um, I used to always do that, uh, mixing black with, uh, with a flesh tone. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I found, uh, I found the guy. Thanks. Not just Mecca. Yeah, okay. I uh, save that on a tab for later. <laughs> so yeah, I use that. Uh, but now I want to simplify the thing. So I will use a warm gray, uh, just ready to use. The thing is, um, I think it's better to know how to mix your colors. Uh, beforehand but um, the thing is um, when you reach a certain level you should try to uh, you know simplify the stuff for the thing just you know keeping your ideas fresh and not over thinking stuff just Put your paint and that's it. But when you're studying paints, I think it's painting. I think it's better to know how things work. So the best exercise uh, is to uh, paint with uh, black, white, sorry, black, white, and uh, primary colors. I've done this exercise not truly on figures, but on uh, canvas, cardboard stuff, you know, cheap stuff, uh, painting some landscapes with just 
black, white, and uh, three, three, uh, three primary colors. It's a great exercise. And yeah, three angle approach. Yeah, that's the best, I think. You need to um, you know. It's always interesting to know uh, to know some stuff about uh, anatomy while painting. For example, here it was not a volume very very uh, sharply sculpted, but uh, I decided to uh, to put a little highlight there because I know that there is a muscle here. That you have uh, the limits of a muscle here. So yeah, it's just a case, very, very mundane, very simple, but it's a simple case on, you know, why it's so important to um, try to be uh, pluridisciplinary. And yeah, the same goes for, uh, for, for sculpting and drawing, for example. Drawing can help you a lot uh, while sculpting, and sculpting will help you a lot for drawing. And it's, uh, it's very, very interesting, very important. I think Proko's channel is wonderful for anything. You have great contents. The free content is great already. You don't have to pay for having you know good advices. You can have some nice stuff uh, for free. So uh, yeah, his channel is wonderful. Uh, he has a show about color theory with a uh, with a, a guy. I think he's a concept artist or something like that. It's very very in-depth view of um, you know the bouncing of stuff light bouncing everywhere you know light coming rightly from the sun with the yellow uh, yellow load strong load of yellow and um, bouncing you have some uh, other lights coming from the sky more bluish you know this is very interesting because you just try to explain um, in a very um, useful way, how do you can tweak those things to tinker something like that? Yeah, it's money hungry, but um, I will not blame him. You know, uh, he he wants money, but um, his content is very interesting. So I think it's. It's not that big of a deal. Yes, is advertising a lot, but trying to to to, to have people uh, buying his stuff. But yeah, is providing good things. So maybe the attitude, but I don't mind that. Don't mind that the way he wants money. No, I want money. So uh, yeah. Maybe he's a little money hungry, but it's not that big of a deal, I think. I will not, you know, throw the stone, <laughs> throw, the, throw the first stone at him for that. Oh, yeah, 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 James Journey, wonderful. Love that guy, love that guy. This, his content is great, it's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, flat out incredible. So yeah, James Gurney, oh yeah. Uh, the guy is worthing your subscription and a lot of things like that because he's great. He is freaking great. So I have my warm gray, not warm enough, so I will have to add a little bit of that. Just to warm it a little more. And I have also um i would put some blue in my shadows just in the shadows not blue blue but some marine blue which is that so very old pots but super super liquid but yes james gurney is uh he is incredible i love it. it's it's so unnatural um, and so nice to to follow his Work man seems to be I don't know, sweet, sweetest man on earth. I, it's very, uh, yeah, very nice. Always, uh, you know, simple but not simplistic. 
Uh, I love that. Yeah, the man is so nice. Yeah. There is also um for most most likely for drawing and for it can be a good help for sculpting. Um, David Finch, which seems to be also a very 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 nice uh, nice man, very nice person. I know that uh, some kind of a struggle sometimes because he's grinding his uh, his way through YouTube. I mean, the guy is grinding a lot, but uh, yeah, great content, great great free content. And we just had a little bit of that. What's happening? If I put some of my reds here, just a little bit. Just a little bit of red. My gray. Almost, almost neglectable. Yeah, and a little bit of my black here. Okay, it's giving a nice formation here. And <clears throat> I want the light to be warm, so sorry <coughs> sorry for that using green yellow yeah never never bought his um, DVDs but um, I just watched what he had provided on YouTube and it was great it was already great so I can imagine Okay. Could be cool if our oh what's atelier? You don't know. We'll save the name for later. And uh, yeah, it could be cool if our um, sweet human sunbeam uh, <laughs> could uh, could provide more of. Uh, Drawing content, you know, could be great. Uh, I will just add another tab. Sorry, YouTube. Here and you say, um, ah, sorry. What's atelier? What's atelier? What's atelier? Okay, that's saved for later for later. It seems to be great, I mean, wonderful. Wonder freaking fool! Good. Yeah, that's that's a problem. That's definitely a big problem on the platform. Yeah, I know that. Speaking of Ethan, I know another Ethan, Ethan Baker. Uh, the guy is uh, kind of, uh, you know, he's young, he's kind of, kind of a long-toothed man, I have to say. But I have this feeling. But the, the, I think the guy is great. Um, he's an entertainer. He's fine. Ethan Baker is, um, you know, he just epitomized this idea of kind of aggressive marketing, but not in a bad way. I mean, the guy just created the best from the situation. And I, uh, again, I've really enjoyed it. It's a channel based on tricks, truly, uh, little tricks that can change your life as a creative guy, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's wonderful. Um, uh, this Ethan Baker is definitely a strange but very interesting character. What's in oh yeah, okay, we'll try to uh, to watch that gouache. I should try to uh, do more of that. That and watercolor. I really want to do watercolor again. Oh, you uh, you know uh, Ethan Baker. 
the first time I was just thinking, what was that guy, he's a douche or what? But no, his, his character is funny and uh, yeah. Uh, his content is very, very interesting. Keeping things simple and uh, yeah, giving some uh, very good um, advices. So here I'm just putting some why I begin to do this uh, this you know I was speaking and I'm doing some stupid things it's not a problem but uh, I was not supposed to paint that I was supposed to paint that that's that's not a problem I will uh, Correct things later, that's not that big of a deal. <laughs> I'm talking and uh, forgot that I what I'm painting, it's not very professional of me. Yeah, 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 that's that's it. Yeah, it's persona, but <laughs> it's it's funny. Oh, okay, bye, girl. The man is so funny, yeah. Like uh, a little, like some kind of a um, doctor disrespect stuff, you know. It's funny. Doctor disrespect. I'm not following his channel, but. Goodness, the man knows how to advertise himself. He is incredible. I mean, I'm not a follower, and uh, I, when I saw, um... oh, hi, Zosa. Great. Pleasure to see you uh, coming here. Pass by. Hope you're doing okay. And yeah, the, the, the doctor disrespect. Uh, I followed the, the, the first live stream he made uh, on, uh, on that uh, on YouTube after being tossed from Twitch. And my God, I, I almost wanted to buy a super chat for the guy. It was, it was incredible, so uplifting and just impressive. Um, which is, is basically doing nothing, it's playing video games. He's good, he's very good, no doubt on that. And, uh, and I think he's great if he can earn money like that. Uh, his character is great, the show is really well put together. No, everything is good. But my god, even for someone like me, I'm not a customer uh, for that type of stuff. Uh, and uh, I have to say, it was incredible. It was incredible. I was just this feeling of being part of something like history. It was stupid, I know, but freaking amazing. Aaron Blaze. Oh yeah. We'll try to uh, to find a guy. When it comes to um, to YouTube, I also love um, uh, Marcelo Barangi. Oh yeah, okay. Very important to have a nice experience. Should value more experience. What are we thinking as art? You no, know, art is the result of experience. That's why I'm not very fond of um some contemporary stuff. I'm not dismissing every contemporary art. I know some artists who are doing wonderful stuff, like Evelyn Galinsky. If you don't know her, you can check her on Facebook. She is wonderful. She sculpts. It's, it's beautiful. Not just beautiful. You know, you have this raw aspect. It's a little harsh, you know, raw on the edges, but it's definitely part, it's genuine. It's not that she is not good, she is good, she is very good, she's freaking good. But she genuinely 
is making artistic choices. So yes, her is she is a contemporary artist and she is great. But there's some stuff that are not so great, you know, the those variations um upon uh, upon the ready-made train which was a joke basically a joke uh, from uh, Marcel Duchamp so you have a lot of um a lot of grifters uh in, uh, in that type of, uh, of activity but yeah I think that art is the, the result of your experiences Uh, uh yeah oh yeah okay it was the the uh, the guy who originally originally drew uh the lion king yeah okay someone serious so <laughs> yeah but that's that's what i love with this current era we are in i mean we can pretty much connect with uh, anyone and find some information, find, um, you know, some, not just tutorials, but yeah, some insight on what they're in mind and their experiences, how they see things, how they work. It's very, very, very interesting. It's definitely something very interesting. Yeah. A little bit of almost black stuff here, and that's it. I have tricky part with black is to not use black. But having this looking black, <laughs> you know, if you if you want to completely mess with your brain, just try to wear some kind of a black pant, for example, like black trousers, <laughs> um, and try to just watch how the shadows and lights. Uh, how lights is bouncing on top of the thing and uh, you will see that um, for the most part you interpret your your clothing as black but it's not black there is pretty much no black it's completely crazy yeah true Thanks for the internet, yeah. A lot of people just you know, like to say, ah, oh, yeah, I mean, people are all on their phones, on their, yeah, yeah, but you have, you have the, uh, pretty much all of the uh, knowledge of humanity in your hand right now. That's crazy, it's crazy. I mean, I, I want to buy some um, some SD card for my, uh, my old Mac, just to expand the memory and uh, yeah I found that you can have some small uh, SD card mini SD um, smaller than my nail here my thumbnail and you can put one terabyte one freaking terabyte in that it's crazy and yes when it comes to the internet it's we, we, we have it's 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 a chance. I mean, it's a it's almost a blessing, you know. It's. A... I'm I'm no believer, but uh, when it comes to that specific thing, my God, we are lucky. Okay, and here. No. 
more intermediary color with black and just to save some time wet blending the thing that's it that's good okay Oh yeah, <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. And you're able to talk with these guys. And it's even more wonderful when you see that the guy is nice, you know, not a douche. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, the books. French and Scurney. It's, uh, the, the books uh, Fire and Ice from Martin. So here, just to explain a little what I'm doing, I'm putting some um, areas. I'm putting some light in my areas, previously painted in white. Uh, you know, I'm just mapping the surface just to, to have some kind of a mental chart on where goes where and uh, and yeah. I mean, you should do something in order to move. So uh, no matter if it's a, if, if you're doing mistakes or not, just put paint and you will fix the thing. That's pretty much what I'm doing right now. So I'm taking, you know, some uh, very clear paint here, very, uh, for having those big highlights. And I will narrow those highlights. Oh, the Frazetta animation. Okay, sorry. Okay, good job. So I'm using um, these highlights here, and I will narrow those highlights in order to um, retrieve this blackish feeling. So uh, yeah. That's why the, the previous step was very interesting for me, because I can I've been able to um, know where to put my lights in order to achieve a specific aspect. Here. And I know where I have to, uh, to go to keep this um, very, 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 uh, very bright contrasts, but um, having this mental, psychological feeling of black. So here, I'll take this gray, dark gray stuff here, just for trying to blend a little more the undercoat and what I put as highlights here. So just putting some paints there. Just feather a little there. Here I'll put some clearer paint as an intermediary. Feather it a little also.
the same thing here. Just flat light. Off screen, I will uh, reveal the um, the limb, then you know the, the the separation here. But I will do it um, off uh, off screen because I will have to uh, to be very close to the surface, and here it will be a little difficult for me to do so. Yup, and now some. Just some work on the mid parts. So. Mid tones. It's not truly really mid tones, but you know, these intermediary parts coming from dark to light. I'm always thinking, you know, like, I think it was good who said something, write something, wrote something like that, you know, that everything is occurring between light and, uh, and, 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 and dark, and yeah, colors are basically existing in the realm of the, in the middle, you know, this middle word between light and dark, and this is, yeah, it's kind of poetic. I know that Goethe was an absolutely not scientist. <laughs> Not at all, uh, but yeah, it's, there is some kind of meaning behind that specific idea. It's very convenient to think like that. Yeah. That's also why I'm blocking the lights with white right at the beginning. Because my story will be developed uh, in the space, you know, from dark to light, from my recesses in black to my uh, my my highlights. Uh, here, <sighs> improve the blending. Will improve nothing if I'm that diluted. Let's see. Sometimes I don't know if I will have to use this thing. Um, you can work wet on wet, just like you know with watercolor. You can pre-wet. That's also why it's so interesting to use a, a demineralized water, you know, distilled water. With things going in the iron. Um, because um, it's drying, it's it's drying um, slower than regular tap water. Specifically, if you're uh, in a place in which you have a lot of you know calcium. In it. Can put some. We'll try to, to show you. Uh, for example, if I want some very brutal highlight here, I can just put a little, not a puddle, but you know, good amount of uh, of water, and I can just run my brush, and I have just enough time to feather it. Sometimes it's not even required to feather anything, you know. And yeah, it's a way to. Um, Create some happy little accidents, like you know Bob Ross used to say. It's also, if you are good, uh, if you're good at that, you can also uh, be very smooth. It's uh, coming from watercolor using wet on wet technique. You know, you, you're, you're basically um, almost damping <laughs> a piece of paper with water, and uh, you just can put some color, they will fuse everywhere and uh, and they will blend very nicely. It's um, kind of tricky to um, master, but uh, it's very, very, very useful uh, in watercolor. It can be kind of useful f for uh, figure painting. That's 
a way to, uh, to to work like that. You know, you can do it in the shadows also. You can if I put that in the, some kind of a recess here. It takes some almost pure black. Put a dot here. And now I have plenty of time to you know, tinker something, to tweak the thing. Yeah. Simple, but efficient. It's also why it's important to be um, some kind of trunk vessel in um, pluridisciplinary. That's definitely something I want to um, develop more on this channel. No, uh, Try to not um, create uh, boundaries when you don't need to have to have them. No. Okay. But yeah, Joe, I would definitely have to check this. Um, Animation from Frazetta. I lack some kind of culture when it comes to those uh, illustrators and uh, you know those products. I should definitely try to uh, to watch more stuff like that because they're very important. They're pop culture icons. Okay. The other thing quite tricky with these miniatures, uh, you know, this plastic one, uh, they um, they try to hide some undercuts with, uh, you know, with some plastic. So. It's great because you have those wonderful miniatures with a lot of detail in plastic, so it's very convenient, it's very useful, it's wonderful. This is obviously a very, very well-made miniature. Uh, I, I really enjoy it. But there are some parts, uh, if you want to have great results, uh, you have either to re-sculpt the thing, uh, and to cut and carve and put tremendous amount of time and attention in that or uh, you will have to do pretty much the same thing with paint so uh, here for example um, that is uh, some kind of a shortcut to um, remove an undercut so here if I want to uh, to have a nice aspect I will have to redraw the thing here just to be sure that the thing that I have uh, the right amount of thickness for this clothing and the right amount of black or almost black stuff to to just give this feeling of um, you know um, of Loosiness in the clothing. I mean, not sticking to the body. And this, this is really some kind. Sometimes it's kind of challenging, you know, to uh, have to work every part like that. Can't rely solely on your on the volumes that are there. Here, put no, it's too clear.
to here. Oh yeah, I, I didn't tell you, but um, sorry, not um, used to that, but yeah, um, Zoe Studio is a French miniature painter. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's doing great stuff on YouTube here. If you're a French picking, just have a look. Very nice and entertaining. Nice and entertaining. Should try to be more entertaining. I will do just like Ethan Baker. <laughs> now, nah. if I do that, this will just be cringe. <laughs> Pure cringe. If I ever try to do that. Feather a little more, and yeah, okay, that's it. Uh, yeah, that's good. That's good, okay. Now I have to paint that and that. So there, uh, just glaze that a little because it's not dark enough. So I have to change a little bit, a few stuff. To have a more blackish look, here too. And yeah, that's it. That's good. That's good. Okay, here I put some some shadows, shading the thing here, okay, oh, goodbye Zos, see you soon, maybe in your live stream, I don't know if you're doing one uh, this uh, this week, hope so. Always entertaining. Oh my God, you have a, a nice, uh, nice following, which is great for you. Yep, yeah, see you very soon. Okay, now um, things are not that bad. Since I began to work on the on the pants, I will continue working on that. Uh, so we we'll pretty much use the same colors with one detail, though. I uh, will use some black here and my mix for green shadows. Yeah, that's that. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah, it's working. It's working. 
It's a little different, but it's kind of nice. Okay. Do that. Add a little bit of that. Mixing, and that's it. New strands. Okay. Wonderful. Wunderbar. <laughs> no. I'm not a German speaker at all. Pretty calm. Everyone is uh, extremely concentrated. So, oops, sorry. Uh, here, I will put some of this there. The kind of deeper shadows here will be done with that. Maybe it's some. Um, nah, I will add some uh, something. I will add some uh, English uniform. Definitely needs some kind of an English uniform here. I'd love to have an English uniform on my khaki. Well, I'm messing around with my colors, always end up correcting a little something here. Yeah, better. Problem with English uniform in that contest context. I mean, uh, it's a little too saturated for my test, so I will have to desaturate a little with black, for example. A little bit of my mix here, yeah, and yeah. Okay. If the thing is too neutral, it will not be interesting to um, to to see. So I want this to not be completely neutral. I want to neuter some stuff, but not every every aspect of this color. Need to. Keep in mind that I on some color. Not just, you know, some muddy grays everywhere. Which is also why I want to have more of these paints with um, mono pigmented formula. It's awful. I, I can't say the word formula, formula without thinking of that cursed cartoon. It's, it's awful. But funny. Okay, so here... Let's see if it's working or not. I mean, I think it will work. But here, since I have some kind of big stuff, I can work just like that, everything wet blended. <clears throat> everything with wet blending, maybe I should just Yo! Okay, that's it. Wet blending. Is time saving. Yeah, that's could be that could be my motto. No. I'm not using wet blending as much as I used to. I used to pretty much paint everything with wet blending <coughs> as a first step. And it was uh, also kind of interesting. Hmm. 
for demonstration purposes here wet color almost not diluted there and feather That's why it's so interesting to work like that. You can pretty much do anything. In a matter of seconds, you know, and I can just add some some almost not diluted color on top of that and that's with be cool. That is good. Just will make some share Twitter. Tweet. And that's it. And now other leg so that's nice here That's good. And now, just on the knee here. And there, there. Okay. Okay. Now, keep adding light here, just try to dilute that a little more, and just for saving time, I will use a little brush here. That's, yeah. Okay. So it's working out not too bad, I think. I'll do the same thing here. I should have worked like that all the way at the beginning. Okay. Just feather this part, just in order to um, avoid any type of um, you know um, bad texture. Okay, for the boots, I will uh, keep my. Uh, I'll use my uh, my one black. For those those little uh, 
little those big boots here, just there, there. Yep. Try to have some texture, um, not having you know too much blending. I will try to, to keep it a little rough. Uh, keep it rough. Um, yeah, so here I will put some lights there. There it is. Some blacks here. Here I can use some pure black because I need to be very, very dark. Completely, almost completely clogged. Yeah. That's it. There we are here. Shadows. Oh, I think the tip is in metal. Let me check. Yes, it's uh, yeah. it's a metallic shell. So we'll have to change things a little. It's not a problem. Lucky me, I checked. Great stuff here. Now, gray, more gray, just to blend everything here. From that, that, and that. Okay, and now I have that. That is just the way I want it to look. Great, and now a little bit here. Okay. Do the same the same thing on the other side there. This part is not that important, so I'll not push too much my work on that. Mm-hmm. 
another layer here. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. And I will work on that part too. And uh, yeah, after that part, I think I will. Uh, I will stop for that session after working on that bark, uh, that back part of the, 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 um, the shirt and I will uh, do another live stream on that figure later but now I'll just try to work a little on that because my paint is still very fresh and very usable so it will be a problem to not use it Definitely. Here for saving some time I'm using wet blending in a very loose way, you know. There we are. First approach. Second here. Oh, I have a little something to uh, to fix later with some uh, putty. Oh, nothing too bad. Ah, yeah. Okay. to sketching light, so I'm just putting some, blocking some highlights here. There is a block, basic block here. Okay, that's good. That's it. Holy crap, sorry. and nice so work with that too Okay, <clears throat> black, there, there it is, that's nice and sweet, and that's cool here.
freaking Okay, and there we are. Just glaze for narrowing the highlights. Reopen them. And do pretty much the same, the same thing on the other side here. Here I can glaze too, just to narrow. Same here. Glazing here, glazing there, glazing here, and there. There's a little bump. I forgot here. So there we are. Here we are right now. So uh, there's still a lot of work to do, and uh, even the flesh, but uh, yeah, it looks pretty much it. Um, the thing is, uh, here I will have to work on that. Already, I can tell that this uh, this uh, belly will need a little more work uh, in those areas here for having you know, those very deep shadows. Yeah, I'll change maybe one or two details, like. Um, the buckle here is um, um, is painted in very light gray, white stuff. I did not do that. Uh, I think it's not interesting to have that here. So maybe uh, we'll paint it in um, red or rusty metal. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Since I have already some stuff here, I just will paint um, uh, just paint here the first thing here, the first 
base code for that. Produce um, leather, leather straps here. Try to just put some, just a basic layer here. Have some colors. Now we'll have to stop because I need to eat something. Coat. Try to put some more colors on it. Yo Same here for that. So next time I'll work on uh, on the metallic parts uh, off screen. I will uh, work further uh, on the the flesh tones. Basically, we'll just add some uh, some layers to um, clean everything and have a nice overall aspect of it. And uh, yeah, that's all. I will also work on the face, um, it will be faster and simpler for me to work that on off screen, but I will just add some red dots in the eyes and uh, and painting the tooth, the teeth, sorry, painting teeth, and that's all. Or maybe I should try to uh, to keep that for live streams. We'll see. Okay. So here we are right now. I will stop there. So the back is uh, done, not finished, but I have uh, I put a lot of um, information on this uh, on this uh, this part. Uh, here the um, pants it's kind of good. Uh, I will um, just blend a little more those lights here and there that are quite harsh. Uh, maybe I will add some texture. And uh, yeah, for the skin, the same. We'll have to uh, to take care of some one or two stuff that are not very nice. Okay, here there are some there's some problems. I will have to to to, to correct. Uh, the same here, uh, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, the thing will go uh, and will be uh, better and better and better and better. That's pretty much the only thing I uh, I'm aiming right now is to uh, improve every uh, every gradation. So yeah, here we are. A little close up for you uh, if you're interested. Yeah. So for now, here we are. Still a lot, lot of things to be done, but um, sorry. Mm. 
use our very very early steps so yeah so I don't know if you're still there Joe thanks for um, watching and uh, it's always a very very nice to see you uh, in my live streams have a nice chat always a pleasure uh, thanks to uh, Zo Studio to, um, to, 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 to to come uh, to come by and uh, thanks Gail Natagaza thanks everyone uh, sorry for the, um, the, the, the false start uh, stuff at the beginning anyway thanks for watching if you're interested um, if my work is uh, something that interests you uh, you can follow me on social media, every links are in the description down below. And uh, yes, I will come very soon with another live stream session on that mini. And uh, yeah, just to uh, try to uh, advance and maybe finish it in the next uh, session. Thank you and uh, take care. And since then, goodbye and see you soon.